Hello, everyone, and welcome to my September newsletter. And um, it's a great pleasure to be with you. I am so thankful to everyone's feedback on the gratitude. I didn't think it would have such a profound effect, but it's really wonderful um, just to get everyone's take on how they use the word or how they see the word and and how they apply that in their life. It was just really, really lovely, actually. Um, and I'll give a big shout out to Alison in Thailand, who took the time and effort and energy to, um, yes, to reach out. And um, hopefully I'll see you in Christchurch, New Zealand at some point. So I have been continuing my journey with my Reiki master teacher training and my Reiki attunement classes. And what I find with those classes is that not only is it um, a training for them and a healing process for the student and the Reiki master teacher, but also for myself, I really find that when I go on these journeys, there's always something that sort of sparks or ignites in myself that is another level of healing for me to adjust to and to sort of bring forward. And in the Reiki 3 class that we had just a fortnight ago, the student, she asked a really poignant question about how she'd come through lots of events in, their, in her life, but she didn't want to keep replaying the same story because she felt she'd done a lot of work and that she'd come to terms with events and she didn't want to be portrayed as a victim to circumstances. So we then got into this conversation about reframing the words that she used in terms of how to describe those events or to describe herself as a co consequence of those events. And I think for myself, I really took time to think about this after the class. In fact, I've been thinking about it over the last couple of weeks. Because when we reframe something, when we have something that is traumatizing, traumatic, chaotic, life-changing, we can almost limit ourselves and become um, a caricature of that set of circumstances. We can even be stigmatized by those sets of circumstances if we keep replaying them. And so with this student, it was all about, well, we're not going to replay those events, but we're going to reframe them. We're going to use different words to elevate the experience into the positiveness. Who did you become? What did you learn? How would you describe that to someone now? And they got so much from it, both the student and the Reiki master teacher, who was part of the class in her final graduation session. And I think for myself, I've, I've really had to reflect back on, well, how do I feel? I think one of the things, I think one of the easiest ways of explaining it is that when we lost our business, on the 4th of September, 2010. So the quake came through and our business, the building was literally falling apart. The stairs had come away from the stairwell, roofs had fallen in, the brickwork was shattered, chimneys had fallen down, it detached itself from the building next door. It really, the, the building was devastated and it was red labeled and, you know, we could gain some access to um, salvage our goods, but we, you know, a lot of it is still buried underneath the main street in here in Christchurch. And, um, and so for years, I have to say, for years, I have described my family business as being in quake recovery or we're a quake, we're a quake recovery business. That's how I would describe it. And it wasn't until two years ago 
when you know we've started this family business from complete scratch taken that idea ran with that idea developed the concepts developed the range developed a customer base to the point that our product has sold into nearly 40 countries now with Jamaica being I think no baby Barbados being a new client base for us which is wonderful so about two years ago, I reframed that from being a quick recovery business to just being in business. We were no longer a quick recovery business. Yes, it was a pivotal point in change in our lives for everything, for our staff, for ourselves personally, for ourselves in our business life. We had to really think our way through all of that and how we describe ourselves but now now I see our business as a thriving business and we're just in business we're no longer in recovery and so for those of you who are out there thinking about your life and when people ask you then think about how you can reframe reframe some of the events that you are are going through or have been through it is something that's more current I think one of the classic examples was a friend of mine who um, was diagnosed with cancer and in her recovery mode very successful recovery I have to say and I'm always really proud of Wow, just how she handled it and how our family handled it. But people would ask her, oh, I believe you've got cancer. And she and she instantly reframed it to, no, I don't have cancer. It's gone. That, and that's a reframe. She reframed it in a second. The minute she had her surgery, she reframed the event to, well, no, actually, I don't. It's gone. And, and that has been a wonderful journey for her. And it's certainly something I've taken on board um since that event many years ago now and so I think I think for us we develop a habit in how we talk about ourselves we develop a habit in how we describe events in our life we develop a habit of churning over and regurgitating that's a good word regurgitating phrases that describe events or things or who we are. And we forget that through the passage of time, we become something very different. And it could be the passage of time for my friend from having an operation to post-operation. So she had cancer, but she no longer had cancer. And it was as quick as that, as quick as that. So proud of her for that. And then we have ourselves in our quake state where we were quake recovery, quake recovery, quake recovery. For 10 years, we were in quake recovery until, as I say, about two years ago. And it's just actually, well, we're just in business. We're just a family business. That's who we are. And in reframing some of these events, you might find that not only will people look at you differently, but you will look at yourself differently and not see yourself as the victim, as um, the bully or this angry person or the gossip or whatever traits uh, you want to reframe, whatever actions, thoughts, feelings and emotions you want to reframe into something new. You have this real opportunity of telling your story in a far more positive and a far more present um, set of terms. I think it does take courage to find new words to describe yourself because we don't like talking about ourselves in positive terms. We'd far rather look at everything that we are disgruntled about and that we don't like We'd far rather talk about those things because we're not seen as bragging or being overly confident or boastful or arrogant even. Um, however, 
I do think there comes a point when it is okay to say good things about yourself. And it is okay to look at the old you and reframe your words, your thoughts, your actions, and your feelings into your the new you. Because if you don't recognize who you are, then how will other people recognize who you are? And I suppose for me, with every Reiki attunement class, I'm always learning something about myself. I'm always delving into my emotional bucket. I think as um, the characters in American Housewife called it, or my emotional pond, mucking around in my emotional pond. But I always love when I do that and then I see how far I've come. I see where the healing still needs to be done because I'll still feel some emotional response or where I've done and completed my emotional journey because I don't feel anything. And that's the reward. That is the reward. You can become whoever you need to be through just reframing your life. In my newsletter, Dialogue, I talk about an exercise that is in um, the meaningful mindfulness, or the mindfulness meaning. Um, and um, it's where I get um, clients to create a story about themselves. And they only have 30 minutes and they've only got two paragraphs and they are limitless. They are limitless and they can create whatever they want. It could be a fairy tale. They could be a fairy princess or a fairy prince or a king or a queen, whatever they want to be. And I think the example that I gave them was my childhood was a childhood where my father died when I was four. And, you know, I, I really haven't had that. I didn't have that fatherly connection. But actually, every time I went to the movies, which was really easy for myself and my sister, because my grandmother was a cinema manager. So we spent all of our holidays in the cinema, in the big screen, the world of the big screen with wonderful actors. And so I just took their qualities. I looked at all of these magnificent qualities, the Paul Newmans and the Steve McQueen's. Oh, and the David Nivens and the Tony Curtis. I'm giving my age away here in these wonderful actors from the 1960s, 70s and 80s. Um, Gene Hackman, gosh, who wouldn't want to, you know, absorb his wonderful energy as an amazing um, character actor. And, and sort of reframed, I suppose, what I felt would be a wonderful fatherly figure and how I would I would love to endear that to me, how I would love to draw that to me. And so in my story, I absolutely did my two paragraphs worth of being a little princess and having a fatherly figure who portrayed all of the fatherly traits that I felt would be endearing, loving, caring, nurturing and special. So I think, you know, we can reframe our lives we can talk about ourselves differently, and that is absolutely okay. It is okay to change your opinion into something that it is productive and something that is um, nurturing and caring. It's not boastful. It's just a new perception of yourself. So I hope that the word reframe will mean something different to you, not like the picture in the background there, um, but, you know, reframing, reframing your words, your thoughts and your feelings about yourselves is a powerful, powerful process to go through. As always, we have our monthly meditation um, on Wednesday this week. We're doing the orange mandala with the yellow background and it's about karma. I'm going to be talking about karma because it's past life healing versus release. Is there a difference and how will that be? So I'm really excited. If you want to join us, you can just come in as um, a once a month student. You can find 
our monthly meditation link on the website. For those of you who are part of the Opus Soul community, I'm looking forward to talking to you about karma in this next session. It's really exciting. And we have the ebooks. So um, it's really interesting. The, I developed a small selection of ebooks for each of the courses, just as a taster. People are really curious and I get asked lots of questions about the courses. And um, so these little ebooks are there for you. They're not expensive. They've got good exercises in them and they maybe help you gain an understanding or some tools before you leap into coming on to the online academy as well. So a couple of things to look out for and hopefully we will be seeing you next month having thought of a new way of thinking about yourself and um, how to be at peace with yourself. So until then, until the next time, take care for now. Namaste. And um, I look forward to your feedback as always. Bye for now.